Oi oi, welcome to the Flashmasters podcast. I am Martin Hobby and I am proud to be a member of the Flashmasters community. Flashmasters recognises and celebrates the best flash photography in the world through awards, education and community. To find out more and to join us, visit flashmasters.co. Here are your hosts, Helen Williams and Neil Redfern. Hi everybody and welcome to the Flash Masters podcast with me Neil Redfern and me Helen Williams. This is a very very special episode isn't it because we are recording today's podcast in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> yeah we are on my shine workshop which is my three day wedding day workshop and it's been brilliant I've loved it so far. How have you found it Helen? Very good and where are we exactly Neil? We're in North Wales. I'm not falling for your <laughs> no, trick. where are we exactly? <laughs> Clangochlin. Oh, dear. Clangochlin. Yeah, anyway. That's so exactly what I said. Clangochlin. Yeah, yeah, so anyway. it's been brilliant. Today we spent the whole day shooting. The weather's been amazing. I think most people actually just enjoy being outside, just having a drink, basically. And I thank you all. I'm looking around the room now. Thank you all for coming. You've made it so, so good. And the great thing is about being a three-day sort of residential workshop, so we're all staying in this huge house. Well, also with a few guests, a few flies as well. We're all <laughs> staying in this amazing house. So we're all just sat up drinking now. It's nearly midnight but we've decided to record a podcast. Yes, as you do. And yeah, we're not just talking just the two of us today. We do have one of our wonderful attendees joining us. Well, hopefully others join oh. in. We'll see how it goes. So what we're going to do, we're going to play a game called Argumental, which is basically an idea that I've got from another <coughs> podcast. So a big shout out to my favourite podcast, which is Jack Makes Happy Hour, where they have played this game. And basically you have two people arguing their case for something now it, that doesn't mean that they actually believe it but the game is they have to put their case forward for that so the first round <laughs> is going to be helen versus our amazing attendee and incredible wedding photographer go and check his workout drew dodd do you want to recount your story you've just been talking about drew <laughs> <Beforehand>. no <laughs> is just shaking his head he has given us the wildest wedding story we've ever heard but yeah it was that wild we haven't been able to record it unfortunately. yeah okay so we're going to start off with what was the subject we was going to say ah oh. who now i don't think helen or drew like either of these two suppliers however the game is the game don't hate the player is that what's the stat saying yeah, yeah don't hate the player hate the game yeah either way so the subject is the most important wedding supplier on a wedding day, content creator versus Toastmaster. So Helen notoriously finds it tricky to work with Toastmasters. I happen to love Toastmasters. I love Absolute their red jackets. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I love their little red jackets and the way that they just walk around doing nothing. That's my favourite thing. So they're not little though, are they? Yeah, no, 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 often not. Every Toastmaster is massive. <laughs> that is true. That is true. We're gonna ask Helen to put forward the case for Toastmasters being far <clears throat> more important than content creators. Drew loves content creators. He loves how they jump in front of him with their mobile phone. So <laughs> he's going to put the case forward for content creators. So it's up to you two who's going to go first. And then afterwards, so you'll both spend 20 seconds, 30 seconds putting your case forward. Then you can debate it. Then we're going to open up to a vote, a group vote about who wins. And it's very much not on your preconceived ideas. It's on who puts forward the best case. Okay. So who wants to go first? I'll let our guests go first. How kind I am. Oh, Drew, thank you very much. Okay, so you. Drew, can you please tell us why content creators are much better and much more important on a wedding day than Toastmasters? So I would say now phone is basically how people consume media. So I think a content creator going around taking things with their phone so that people can view it on their phone is the best way for someone to feel like they were at their wedding. It's almost taken over from photography and videography in some regards. Is that been, I don't know if I'm allowed to jump in. Would you say that they're more important than the photographer now? It's not something that I'd expect Maybe you to say. Maybe not more important than photographer, but you could argue that it's on par with rather than having a videographer. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, oh, you though, because <laughs> it's more common for people to watch reels and things like that on their phones than they would watching a film on the TV. Wow, interesting. It's a compelling case. 
also, I mean, I've spoken to this about my girlfriend quite a bit, where I think the invention of a f- smartphone with it being portrait is destroying cinematography because good cinematography is obviously done 16 by 9, but now all media is 9 by 16. Does this not sound like you're actually arguing against content creators then? No, no, but <laughs> so so now that the media, the way we consume media has changed, the content creator has filled oh. this new <laughs> void. So they're doing basically what is on trend now. I'm so actually believing it. They're yeah. doing these things, that the boomer. I don't know, is boomerang still a thing? I don't know. I don't am, know. am I just really <laughs> old? But they're doing these TikToks. things and, yeah, the, like Why the TikTok things. <laughs> <laughs> so they're doing the TikTok. I mean, people are going to look at, back at these for however long the smartphone does. In 20 years, no one's going to be like, wow, wasn't it really good that I got invited into a room by a man in a red jacket? Oh, yeah. Oh. There's the dirt. <laughs> Like, no one's going to remember that, and the coordinator could do that. Or what mostly happens is the coordinator can't be asked to do it, and they get the photographer to do it. <laughs> Let it out, Drew. Like, it's good. It's good therapy. <laughs> well, maybe then, maybe not announcing them into the room, but, like, I feel like as a photographer, we do a lot of coordinating on the day, like getting yeah. the group shot together and stuff like that. There's one venue in the Northeast where the coordinator guy does literally everything. Like, he gets the big group shot together. He's really cool, actually, as well. Like, his voice, like, fills a room, and he's like, Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? <laughs> and everyone shuts up and looks at him. Sounds like he's pretty important, though. Yeah, yeah, he is, but he's not a Toastmaster. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. Well, well saved, well saved. <laughs> He doesn't wear a red jacket. <laughs> he wears a very fetch and purple jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets everybody out for the for the group shot and stuff. So venues provide these things without you getting some guy from some guild or whatever they're in <laughs> to do these things. You, you know, well, you I can say, first of all, let me just say that's a very compelling case. So thank you, Drew. Uh, oh, thank you, you, you really changed my opinion there. <laughs> So I don't know how you're going to come back from that, Helen. I mean, oof, they sound like they're vital. Well, no, Toastmasters are absolutely vital. Oh. They are there on a wedding day to be that person that everyone can see clearly. And most people, how many weddings have they been to in their lives? How many times have our brides and grooms been married before? Some maybe once, maybe twice if they've been very unlucky. But many people on a wedding day don't know what they're doing. They need the support, the guidance, the sort of the, someone to lean on to help guide them through, you know, the pitfalls and emotional roller coaster and journey of a wedding day. And I think that's where a Toastmaster thrives and succeeds. They are professionals who know exactly how the day should run, who can apply a buttonhole or a boot in the ear if you want to be extra posh. They are there to support and guide our couples and their guests on every step of the wedding journey but they're not doing tiktok dances or anything like that which you know that's that they're gonna be amazing to look back on but if we didn't have a toastmaster <laughs> then we would all be running far too late and then the content creators wouldn't even be able to get their tiktok mm. because the place would just be a shambles i mean drew i don't know what you want to say i do, to that. I do agree with you on one point <laughs> where you said they're there to be visible because they are at the back of every single fucking photograph oh, of the ceremony the fire. and they're not even looking at the ceremony they're looking at the opposite wall just stood there like a telephone box oh, and it yeah. is ridiculous it's like if you're gonna be at the back don't wear red <laughs> it's like, funny because it's true <laughs> I think they're just so a annoying. wonderful pop of colour. They're vibrant. Fight you back, could, Helen. You <laughs> could literally colour pop. You could literally, you know, we're going back to the trends of the 80s and, you know, early days. Fashion is back in that trend. I think colour pop's going to be huge. What a brilliant person to colour pop in yeah. a wedding with the Toastmaster. I heard Perfect. a rumour, though, that Adobe brought out generative <laughs> fill to get rid of Toastmasters. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is so hard. <laughs> Get eight Toastmasters. I hate them. No, but th- th- they do. I'm not provide. even. I'm not even like <laughs> arguing for content creators here. Yeah. I'm just arguing against anybody. And that's what we're all loving. Get anybody but a Toastmaster. Like, get a chimney sweep. 
Have you seen them? <laughs> yes. I shot my first no, wedding. No, but I, I, I am intrigued by these. I yeah. shot my first wedding with a chimney sweep like six years ago, <laughs> right? And my girlfriend was helping me as like a light and assistant. And it was just after the ceremony. And she came to me and she was like, Drew, the chimney sweep wonders when you're going to do the photo with him. <laughs> and I was like, sorry? And she was like, the chimney sweep is outside. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, there's a man with suit on his face with a bike and a chim and like a brush and he wants to speak to you. And I went out and he was literally there. And I was like, hello. And he was like, oh, when are you going to do the photos? And I was like, I'm really sorry, but I've got no idea what you're talking about. And he was like, oh, the bride's mum booked me. And I was like, sorry for what? And he was like, oh, it's, it's like tradition it actually, it's and, a good and, and good luck. I, I'm not sure if everybody else it's, is aware. It is actually a thing. You have a chimney sweep turn up to your wedding uh, day. It's good luck for the bride to be kissed by a chimney sweep on our wedding day. And I was like, who made up that tradition? <laughs> chimney sweeps. Chimney sweeps. <laughs> who want to go around kissing brides. Uh, so then I was like, all right, okay. And the bride uh, so in your case, it doesn't know. I, so I did. I, no, I, sh I don't think she did. So I did the photograph with the bride and groom in the chimney sweep. And then I said to the guy, I was like, how did you get into this? And he was like, no, no, I'm literally a chimney sweep. He says, <laughs> this is my side hustle. He says, I was at the petrol station the other day, filling my van up with his <laughs> chimney sweep thing on. And the bride's mum came over to him and said, my daughter's getting married at the weekend. Would you come to the wedding? So he was like, so I just put some suit on my face and like, and turned up. He's like, come here. <laughs> yeah, it was mad. Sin and since then, I've done, th so including that one, I've done three weddings with three chimney sweeps. And separate switch. I mean, that's separate over, over 13 years, so it's not really that traditional. No, I've done none. I've never but had it that is look. mad. Another tradition, I don't know if it's just in my area, but there's, there's, I mean, there's one church, these women come, and it's a tradition that after they're married, the couple have to climb over this little, they've got this little stool. So they put this little stool out of the church. The couple climb over and the groom has to give each of the two women 20 quid. <laughs> and they're like, they're like in their 70s. Like it's a total racket. That is a brilliant scam. Wow. All those people, better than Toastmasters. <laughs> There's just so much to take from that. So now if we don't want to photograph weddings anymore, but we're bored on a Saturday, we literally just take a stool outside church and force people to pay us before they exit. I in have, Northumberland. It's, it's, I don't, I've not seen genius. it anywhere else. Witches or something? No, no, they were like WI members. <laughs> <laughs> WI? <laughs> My mum's in the WI, so <laughs> I, I was giving them the best best credit I could, but they're oh, onto a money-making scam. That wow. is brilliant. 40 quid to go over a stool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a, you know, like what you would see, like people would like milk a cow on. So yeah, it's like a really little stool. stool, like it's not a bar stool or anything like that. John behind you don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's a compelling case. Crazy, I'm, inter I'm interested, Helen, what, what you, you put forward a very good case for why Toastmasters are so essential. You. But what's your opinion on content creators? <laughs> They're absolute garbage. They're just taking what we're <laughs> taking with shitter equipment <laughs> and bad lights. So yes, they created stuff quickly, but it's not very good quality and they're doing nothing but interfering with the professionals who know what they're doing remember everyone this is not necessarily held opinion this is her playing the game no oh completely yes yes <laughs> i've worked with some i've worked with two very lovely content <laughs> exactly creators. that's why i'm just thinking of these ones in particular yeah the two content creators i've worked with have both asked to come on this podcast so they can fight their corner i'm like nah <laughs> <laughs> Helen's out of wine. Okay, well, anyway. two excellent cases. I think what we're going to do, we're going to go round. Actually, just, just on the on the stool thing. No, I've please just, carry on. This is I've gold. I've done some like quick quick maths here. I think it takes about three seconds <laughs> to go over. So they can do a few in a day. Over the stool. Over the stool. So pro rata on like an hourly rate, <laughs> these two women each are earning like twenty four thousand pounds an hour. <laughs> Or if they can go to like 15 weddings in a day, yeah, they are so sorted. Then, so, so what would that be? So that so say eight hours in a in a day, that's 192 thousand pounds a day <laughs> they're earning. That's 960 thousand pounds a week. We are in the wrong job. Yeah, we just need to stay. Yeah, stay 49.9 million pound a year pro rata. <laughs> That is amazing. That's it's just more a shame a, that they're only getting one booking every 15 years. That's more than a gondola driver in Venice. <laughs> who earns £150,000 a year. What? Did he really? 
Really? Yeah. Oh, this is like a new segment for the podcast, Facts by Drew Dodd. Yeah, Paul, yeah. I, Paul and I went to Italy in the summer. So because of COVID, obviously I had no weddings during COVID. And then after COVID, I had loads of weddings. And Paul as a teacher, so we never had like the summer, yeah. the summer holiday or anything. So this year I said I had one wedding in August and I would turn down every other wedding and would like go away on holiday. So she wanted to go to Lake Garda, so we went there. And then we got the train to Venice and we stopped in Venice for a night and she really wanted to do the gondola ride. And I was like, it's really expensive. And she was like, yeah, but when are we going to be back to Venice? And I was like, well, never, because it's hotter than Mordor. But um, <laughs> so we went on it and it's 80 quid or 80 euros for like 15 minutes or something. Yeah. And then uh, the guy who did it, I, I was asking him about gondola drive. Like, you have to gondola be driving. Wait, so you're only on yeah. it for 15 minutes and part of your 15 minutes you're having a chat with the driver. I basically was like <laughs> this the whole time asking him questions because I was like, I want to know all the information I can get. But So there's only 144 of them do it. You have to be Venetian. You have to do a three-year course. I'm learning. And then you have to retire when you're 65, I think. And then the people who do best on the course take up the immediate spots and then everyone else is like holding. So it's like dead man shoes kind of thing. Oh, wow. And they get like fitness test, drug test, all that. Uh, and the rate of money is set by the like Venetian council. So it's eighty pound in the day, hundred and hundred and ten or something at night. You learned a lot on your fifteen minute gondola. Yeah, um, yeah. But then, so then afterwards, I googled like, oh, so they do four or five days on, three days off in the summer, and then in the winter, they do four days on and three days off or something. So I googled like how much they earn, and it's one hundred and fifty thousand euros a year. <gasps> wow! Just to push a boat around. I mean, it's pretty tough work, actually. Do they they're sing not pushing as well? it. Just one no, they didn't. Tone. But no, they're not actually no. pushing it. It's not like punting. It, oh. it does have an oar. And you're not oaring it like that. You're oaring it like that. And so they have this, I think it's called a rollick like or this. something. Like this works so well. Or they're, not, they're not doing it like this. They're doing it like this. <laughs> and they're like a gondola, they, they own the boat, gets made. Like, so this guy, his was that used ours. I used to want to be a council boat. He, it was named after his wife. Oh. Um, oh. And stuff and it was all like gold leaf and stuff like that it was really nice and the bit that holds the oar i mean what this has got to do about photography I'm no right, i enjoy i'm learning the bit that the oar goes in which is kind of like a rollick i guess on a rowing boat is made specifically for that gondola driver so the height of it and the jaw length and width and stuff like that like perfectly for his style but it's like really strenuous work i think and i mean when we were doing it's it like nearly 40 degrees I wouldn't want to work. Yeah, like that's that, true. Well, for 150 grand, yeah, I would. But yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. That, then your it's poor like girlfriend it's, expecting yeah. romance from Venice, <laughs> and you're just chatting about how some random gondola driver like has yeah. a special order. What, what do you say to a gondola driver? Have you been busy? Have you been busy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you <laughs> on to? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Amazing. I don't, I don't even know where to go for that. I, I, I love the avenues that we've gone down. <laughs> Based on the argument, it can't be Drew that wins, I'm afraid. What? Jeez. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it was a very compelling argument that when he said, will you remember a total pass in 20 years, but you'll be looking back on them TikTok dances, that, w that was the win. That was the mic drop, I'm afraid. You are sleeping on the sofa tonight. Uh, and also <laughs> when, when... In a red jacket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also that the point about, you know, total pass have been the back of photographs. It's, it's a very, it's compelling. It's, it, it sucks me in. Seriously, though, why do they stand behind the top table as well? Do you know what's funny? Like, we spoke about this on previous podcasts, and we said the exact same thing, but you wouldn't have thought that, like, for those that are listening, Drew is based, what, two and a half, three hours away in a different area of the Five. country? Five. Five. Oh, from, 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 <laughs> from yeah. here, yeah. But it's like, you would have thought that maybe it's different in a different area of the country, but no, maybe that's just, it's no, country, no, no, country like, wide. Because I did one in London, and there was a tourist master, and he says there's, like, a guild of yeah. Toastmasters, like, yeah, you've got to be accredited. Maybe they train stuff. them to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so there's, there's someone telling them, like, How be as obnoxious as possible. Yeah, I, I worked with one recently, and I overheard him. We always have to do our caveat. This does not apply to Stefan the Tall Toastmaster, who's very, very good, <laughs> and uh, and actually takes some of your photographs, doesn't he, Helen? Yeah, he has taken some some whole group photos pre-drone era because I'm just too short. <laughs> pre-drone. <laughs> yeah, now I've got a drone. I don't need Stefan anymore. So like, I love you, Stefan, but like, you're now redundant. Oh God. <laughs>
To be uh, fair, everything I've said about against Toastmasters, I should put the caveat in of I've never worked with a nasty Toastmaster. Yes. They've all been like really nice people. It's just been difficult from a photography point of view. I just don't like being micromanaged. It's like, no, I am my own boss now. You've kind of basically taken the role of a boss for the day. I'm like, I don't need you to be tapping your watch or telling me what time to sit down. I know it's just some random person who've just appointed themselves as my boss for the day. Bugger off. Anyway, yeah, that's mine. Thank you so much, Drew, for that. You took the win. And and thank you for the education. I I feel feel educated. No, new Neil Redfern. Aha! Uh -huh. And on that bombshell, <laughs> we will move on now. Thank you very much, Drew. Okay, <clears throat> so that was an amazing win by Drew. Helen was firmly put in her place here. So what we're going to do is Got keep... It. We're going to play winner keep stays on, I think. Yes. And the next debate, Drew is going to take on another of our attendees, a very, very talented wedding photographer, Caroline Rushton. Thank you for joining us. Now, we should just say... Carol Caroline has been a little bit under the weather at the moment. So um, thank you for doing this, Caroline. So this one, this is very controversial. This is flash versus natural light. So someone will be arguing, of course you can use flash. It's not a problem. It will help your images. The other person's going to argue, no, you shouldn't use flash. It's horrible. Natural mm -hmm. light all the way, baby. Now, we are obviously aware this is the Flash Masters podcast. So if you're listening to this, chances are you've already got an opinion on this. But I think we make it a bit tricky for Drew. What do you think? Yeah, 100%. So, Drew, you're going to argue, Flash Masters member and multiple award winner Drew is going to argue the case for natural light only. Okay. Caroline, you're gonna you're on you're on the good side. You're a goodie. You're gonna argue for the use of flash in wedding photography. So who wants to go first? Drew. Okay. okay. So we flipped a coin. Caroline's pointing over to Drew. So Drew, why is flash? Why have you got such an issue with flash? Um, I should just say. Can I just say as well? Because I know this is difficult. Drew. I've said before, go and check out his work. He's an insanely talented photographer who uses Flash to an amazing degree. He's won multiple Flash Masters awards for obviously for his use of Flash. Suddenly, for some reason, he's turned into a turncoat. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a total fraud because I, I use it even though I think it's it should not be used. If you think how many venues there are just in the UK, there's a specific reason why a couple have picked that venue and they've picked it because of how it looks and how it, how it's lit by the venue so who is it for a photographer to be like oh no i don't think you should get married at that venue looking like that you should get married at the venue looking like how i think it should look <laughs> and say for it. who's spent the money the couple have spent the money on the venue that they wanted to look like that you know if you buy a car you <laughs> buy a, you buy a car you buy a mercedes car you don't want to get into it and it looks like a nissan micra <laughs> Like, you're like, no, I bought a Mercedes. Like, I want it to look like a Mercedes on the inside. So don't use a flash. You can basically. tell this guy's got a PhD. No, I, mean, I, I don't want to argue against him for anything. The thing is, though, any professional photographer will, will look at things and know that the camera will show you only so many dynamic stops of light. And you'll need flash to make them act, look like the natural eye would see it anyway. So it's not necessarily going to look always like a flash and a different thing. It's actually making how that person is seeing it because the camera can't make it look like that. Oh. Yeah, I mean, what if you've, what if you've got a rubbish venue? I mean, we can transform that venue. Surely that's a good thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's more that you've got to understand what a couple are looking for in a venue. They've chosen for a reason. What have they seen of it? And actually bring out those aspects. And what if the light's not good that day? You're not getting any camera. It's not going to be able to bring that out in any natural light because there's nothing. And it's making here, that here. flash yes. look not like flash, but actually good lit photos. And that's not what any camera is going to do in natural light. Yeah, I do take your point. It is it is true. I mean, I think it's just, I suppose it comes down to, to faithfulness. Like, you know, if they had a drab day, they might want to have photos that are drab. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, the any, I the think any bride and couple are going to want their photos to look drab. I think they're going to want them to look, their skin to look good, the, their eyes to pop. And the dress to look crisp and how that vision they've always seen their image of the wedding day look yeah. that's why they're going to want i think it. like the thing to think about here is the gold seal for a, a flash photographer 
is when they use flash, but it looks like natural light and you don't know they've used flash. So therefore, if that's a really good flash photographer, but they're replicating a natural light photographer. But it's not, that's no... <laughs> <laughs> that, that may be a good point, but any is and go back to my original point that no camera can make it look like that without you know it has to have an element of light to lift those shadows and bring out that skin tone. You're not going to get that, and that's bringing that, making that flash look like good ambient light because that's how the couple and what their vision in their hearts want for their camera. Oh, their hearts. Oh yeah, good word, yeah. Hit him where it hurts. I mean, I mean, that is true, but also, I mean, you can shoot silhouettes and they don't use flash. And I mean, they look, they look great, but the human eye can't see that. I'd be curious to know, too, what, what's, your, what's your take on, like, winter weddings where it goes dark at 4pm? I mean, I mean, if they want to get married, then, then... That, oh, it's a they, couple's fault. They, they, wanted, they wanted it to be dark, then what are you doing bringing in all these lights? Like, just... Spoiling all the ambient candlelight <laughs> with these flashes just Drew popping. Is Drew's good at this. <laughs> <laughs> he must be in a debating society. <laughs> Any last words, Caroline? On behalf of Flash Masters. No pressure. <laughs> I think that it's get, having bringing good light to a wedding will uh, allow images to be creative, have natural ambient light as well, you know, added to it that aspect bound to that and actually just give a whole different gallery and in it obviously we are in England and obviously you know or, you know we haven't got the the benefit of using that natural light and we have drab horrible light and so we make sure that we can bring that light to a wedding to give them the couple what they need for their for a gallery excellent any last words any cl last closing statements I mean, I, I personally pay $197 a year to be a member of Flashmaster, so I feel like I should just basically walk along the plank myself and say, like, you should be a Flash photographer. <laughs> yeah. But a good Flash photographer. Like, I mean, there is... You can have bad Flash photography and you can have good Flash That's photography. That's very true. Um, and, I mean, there is a room for natural light as well, but sometimes venues don't know how to light themselves. Yeah, very uh, true. I, I think on behalf of everyone in the room, I think Caroline is going to take the win for that one. <laughs> Please God, she does, or else we're out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> what a very, very compelling argument from Drew. Oh, yeah. Again, let me reiterate, this is a game. This is not what... I don't think it's what Drew actually believes. And if you yeah. look at his work, you'll know that his most stunning images, which are insanely amazing. I've learned a lot from Drew at my own workshop. I actually had a bit of a Drew masterclass workshop before from the man himself so yeah thank you drew for that and thank you for putting a, a very good case yeah. forward for natural life uh, my, my hope from this is uh, that someone is listening to the podcast in the car driving along and a mercedes goes past and you think <laughs> is that interior a nissan micra or is it really a mercedes <laughs> i mean that is one of life's great quandaries now I yeah, feel. it's, it's, it's a bit like Schrodinger's all over cat, again, isn't it? You don't know it's the Mercedes interior until you're actually inside the Mercedes. And exactly. there's a flash popping off. Yeah, that was brilliant. Well, thank you so much. I think actually, because we, we, we've learned a lot more and the games have gone on a bit longer than we thought. So we, I think we'll draw a line there, especially because your, your eyes look tiny now, Helen. <laughs> I am knackered. We've been like, yeah, we've been going for a good while. Oh, my, my Fitbit's just got, it's just gone midnight, so I've lost my steps. But I've done, like, about 27,000 steps today. And I think walking around, it's only, we can only describe this place as a mansion. But, yeah, walking up and down the steps, doing all the cooking, this, that, and the other. And, you know, I literally feel like I'm one of those servants on Downton Abbey today. And, yeah, I've, I've just been a bit of a mess. So, if I'm honest, I want to go to bed. I want to, before, <laughs> I want to shower. I need to wash my hair because I don't want to be a greasy bitch tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, sorry, that was a really random end of the I podcast. Did, I didn't think it go to that down there. I, I will say publicly, as it were, on the podcast, thank you, Helen, for, for teaching today. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, did that too. I think from what I've heard, you did an amazing job, not of timekeeping, but the actual <laughs> things that you were discussing, you did really, really well. So, oh, and not only that, you have been organizing all the behind the scenes with the food so thank you for being a massive part of it so i will forgive you for being a bit tired now oh thank you 
Yeah, so again, thank you everybody for coming to this workshop. We, obviously, we've got tomorrow yet. We're, we're not we're not done by any means. Got another full day tomorrow. But thank you all for coming. Oh, thank you for Marcy, who's with my island here, who is not only a great photographer, but a brilliant, brilliant magician who has been doing some of his tricks for us. And yeah, Mind incredible. Blown. So th if only it was a, we were recording some video, I'd ask you to do something. Is there anything you can do audio-wise? I'm guessing not. Yeah, no. but th thank you. I don't know what that would be. And, and I think doing a magic trick on a podcast is probably a little dull for somebody like listening to this. Are they Mike stereo? Stereo, no. Oh, it'd be pretty cool if Martin was like, I'm over here. And, oh, then, he so <laughs> and then if you're listening in a car, he's like moving around your car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give this a micro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, give this a micro. <laughs> Yeah, so oh, thank you all for coming. Thank you to Tobias as well, who has come all the way from Germany. So thank you for doing it. And, and thank you for everybody for coming. I'm loving this so far. It's been amazing, an amazing group. Can't wait for tomorrow. So yeah, thank you very much for listening, everyone. As always, if you'd like to join us in the Flashmasters community, you can do so at flashmasters.co. So yeah, thank you very much for listening, and we will see you in the next one. And don't forget to keep... Jeez, that, that was a big one. That was a big one. <laughs> thank you for listening, everyone. Oh, thank you, Drew. Thank you, Caroline, for being our debaters for our math debates. Thank you very much. Bye. Boom. Oh, thank you, everyone. Oh, my God. You didn't hear the debate. You actually said that. Math debaters. No, you didn't I, me and Drew are confused by this. Play it back. Oh, you're thinking of the rude word. I didn't even get that until just now. Oh you're lying. Gosh. It was Alan Partridge. <laughs> <like>. <laughs>